I know sometimes people try and be perfect too often and being perfect you can only do for so long. So trying to have an approach that is more achievable so that you can do that long term is going to get you better results than trying to be perfect but just mm. for a small amount of time. So welcome to the Stronger, Fitter, Happier podcast. So we are recording on Zoom today and we're actually live on Facebook as well. So if you can see this on Facebook, um, I'm going to try and monitor the comments. Just give me a shout if you can and then I'll, I'll you know, just keep an eye on the comments and stuff to see if there's any questions coming through, that sort of thing. But yeah, we've got Sadie on the podcast today. Obviously, Hello. you may know who I am if you listen to our podcast regularly. <laughs> um, <laughs> And you know who Sadie is if you've listened to any podcast episodes before. But just in case you don't know, I'm Vin, the host of this podcast. And Sadie is Coach Sadie, head coach of Body and Beyond. Hey, guys. And this is my first live on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so bear with me. <laughs> well, we're just going to do it as we normally do with, um, yeah. you know, how um, we just get on with the podcast, have a chat, have a little discussion. So how are you getting on anyway, Sadie? How's everything? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm liking the fact that the weather is a bit nicer now. Um, <laughs> I don't know like how you feel, but if I wake up in the morning and it's bright and the sun's shining, I feel a little bit more geared up for the day and a little bit more motivated. Um, but yeah, how about you? Yeah, I'm all good. I can't complain, to be honest. So just just getting on with it, really. I've just... Obviously, there are struggles in this whole situation going on right now, like you know, being stuck at home, having a two-year-old in the house, all of that sort of thing. It's, <laughs> it's a juggling balance. Like, you know, when you're trying to do work and all that sort of thing. But um, it's just one of those things. I always try and look at the positive rather than the negatives. Yeah. So just trying to find positive things, even when you're getting frustrated and stuff, just trying to stay calm and, you know, bring it back in and looking at the best things that you could do. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, so on this episode, what I wanted to try and do was um, talk about training. So a lot of people, you know, come to us for advice on fitness, on nutrition, on looking after their health and well-being. And right now during the lockdown, a lot of people are very enthusiastic about fitness and a lot of people are taking up fitness, but a lot of people aren't as well. So a lot of people are struggling to find a rhythm with this and I found the people who are very regular in the gym are probably struggling more so than new people getting into activity now so a lot of people who used to be training are probably struggling to find a balance with this whole situation and um, especially with nutrition so I wanted to just have a chat about that so a lot of people are watching on um, Facebook now and they're saying hello so hey guys hey um, yeah so how are you getting on with your training and everything at the moment? Um, do you know what? At first, when all of this lockdown started, I was like, yeah, I'm like motivated and I was training regularly and um, I was excited that I had equipment at home so I could still do exercises and have like variation with what I'm doing. Slowly but surely, the motivation has kind of started to dip. Yeah. And um, it's only been in the last week or two where I found myself not training as often. And when I was training, I kind of wasn't just giving it my all. Like I felt like, okay, that half an hour was okay. Like I didn't feel like I'd put everything into that, that training session. And what was kind of getting to me more is the fact that I'm working every day, training all these members that are so dedicated and training to reg like training consistently and regularly. Like some of the members we train, as you know, Vinay, are training every day, multiple times a day. Mm. And there's me struggling to train three times a week. <laughs> um, so that was kind of getting to me more. The fact that everyone else like, around me who I work with are like doing so well and motivated. And I know it's honestly probably down to having the sessions online. Um, but for me, that was getting to me more. Mm. Like, oh, why is everyone training so much? And I'm like struggling to train three times a week. So I started running. <laughs> <laughs> so the only reason I started running is, and as you know, I'm not really a runner. It was just to have new motivation with my training. So aside from doing all the weights and stuff and body weight training, I wanted a new challenge. And hopefully this will motivate me a little bit more now to just do something a little bit different. And so far it is working. So um 
Yeah. I know that's how much we did, but that's how my journey is going. <laughs> well, you're probably not the only person who's feeling like that. I know a lot, like me personally, yeah, I'm the same. Like in the gym, very dedicated. Yeah. I was training like five days a week, very strictly following a training program. Before the lockdown started, I did like a very mini cut. So um, I did like a li- really quick um, fat loss period for three weeks, lost three kilos, and then was in a good place. Mm. And then the lockdown came and um, it kind of stumped me a little bit. And obviously there's a lot to sort out with work. So it's yeah. very work focused. I had a new routine because I started taking a lot more sessions. So in the mornings I'm, I'm actually training people as opposed to like doing the things I normally do, which would be going to the gym. So the first thing yeah. I would do is train and then get started with my working day before like my daughter and partner are awake. So I had to figure out a new routine and training just got left behind. Like I literally yeah. would find, um, like yesterday, I would, I never do this. I trained at three, no, four o'clock. And I never oh, trained wow. that late in the day. Like yeah. it's not a problem to train at that time. It's just I like to get it done in the morning and get it out of the way because I find that I'm someone who pushes it and pushes it back till later. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I like to train away, like from the house. Like I don't like, I like to find my own space, be in my own zone and work out alone. Yeah, I agree. In term, I agree, not in terms of the alone, but it definitely I feel like the fact that I'm not leaving my house is causing me to be less motivated. Yeah. Like if you get up, you travel to a gym or you're going somewhere, that motivation is there a lot more. I, I agree with that. Yeah. And also training at home when like my daughter is, is around and stuff is, is fine. Like, I like that she gets to see, you know, people like me exercising. She sees on the live, like the lives that the live sessions we're doing um, with our members. She comes in the room and she sees people <laughs> training. I like that she's around that like kind of active lifestyle thing. Yeah, it is a bit frustrating though for to get a good quality session and when you're like trying to move her toys or like you know she comes and sits. She she like I'm doing like rows with the TRX and she tries to sit on my chest. <laughs> and it's good, obviously, it's extra, extra weight. Okay, the problem yeah. is, it's dangerous. Like, she might fall off me. Yeah. So I'm, like, trying to hold her and, like, hug her and try to do a, a set, and it's just not working out right. No. But, um, it's just not the same, is it? And there's more distraction at home. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's, it's very difficult. But you, you're comparing, you're, you were comparing yourself to our members, but you have to remember the one thing that they have right now is the one thing me and you are not doing. Yeah. And it's accountability. Like, they have... 100% accountability from us as coaches so they they're coming in the one they're logging into a live session where other people are with them so that's like accountability from other people accountability from me and you and yeah. and the other coaches who work mm-hmm. with us and also um accountability like that they've logged in and they said they're going to be somewhere so they have to do it at a set time yeah. whereas me and you're going oh we we need to train three times a week but we haven't gone on monday i train Wednesday, I train. Friday, I train. Yeah. Um, and I train at 6 a.m. or I train at 5 p.m. or whatever the time is. We we haven't done that. We haven't set out a schedule and a routine like we would have in the past. Whereas in the past, like you you would train, you would do your work, then you would go into you know your actual like kind of your time, time my yeah, training. from yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever your 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 work time finishes, and then you train then, and then you go and you know you have a bit exactly. more of a structure, and you've been yeah. in that structure for so long that it's a routine and a habit. Mm. So now that our like routine and habits have gone away, and a new routine is formed, like we haven't got that same scheduling and that same structure, and I think we've been really good at helping our members do that because we kept a very similar timetable we've added in even more times and more convenient mm-hmm. times and that's probably helping them stay very active exactly. and they, they've still got us to help them. They've still got each other. They've still got all the accountability tools that we give them. They're still doing all the things we're asking them to with nutrition. If not more, we're yes. being more social yeah. on our group. We're being more active on the group. Um, you know, we're giving them everything we should be doing ourselves. To <laughs> us. And, yeah. and that's, that's why we're struggling and they're not. Yeah. I must admit as well, like at the beginning when all this did start, I did try to have as much routine as possible. Um, like when I would finish my morning sessions, I knew, okay, that was the time I had to go for a walk. When I got back, I scheduled in with my sister. This is the time we're going to train. 
So it kind of started to ease off and she stopped training with me. So then I was a bit like, oh, okay, well, I might not train now. Or oh, I'd say, I okay, I'll train later. And then, like you were saying, you, you push it back, you push it back, the day goes and you haven't done the session. Mm. So I think for me, it's getting back routine. I definitely need more routine and structure to my day, like I had at the beginning. Um, and also maybe someone that I can hold myself accountable to a bit more. Like, so maybe you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to um, sort your programming out and literally like be your coach again like I used to be back in the day. Um, that's yeah, I'm more giving than... you too much workload, man. <laughs> it's fine. I, I can write a separate program on. Um, it's fine. I, I don't mind. No, but it, do you know what, though? Like, aside from that, though, that's why I literally started the running because I needed something to motivate me more. And I felt like with the training just at home and I'll do my squats, I'll do my lunges and there was no kind of push. Like I would work to not even like failure on some things. I'd feel like, okay, well that was quite easy. Like yeah. I didn't push myself. Um, whereas now the running is a challenge. It's something new to look forward to each week. And I'm like trying to push myself with beating the time and not saying it's going to replace what I'm already doing with training, but it's just going to give me some new motivation mm. each week. So yeah, I think what what we both need to do is go back to the drawing board in terms of like how we help our members. The first thing when a member joins us is we we set goals, we set new goals, we we discuss why they're trying to achieve these goals, we go through them in depth, and we set mm-hmm. out like a map of how how long it's going to take to achieve these goals, what they need to do for the next ninety days. Then we break it down into sixty, thirty, and weekly targets. Now. Yeah. I wouldn't actually recommend you to do that with specifics right now because we don't know what's going to happen in 90 days time. No. So there's no point setting like um, specific things, but you can still have like a broad goal of, you know, mm-hmm. I want to get stronger over this period. However long I'm training at home, my goal is to stay fit, stay strong, maintain whatever level of muscle I've built or whatever it is your goal is, um, you know, do that. Then I think what me and you need to do is then like kind of have a bit more of an idea of like how we're going to do this in terms of like setting a structure, setting a routine. So what we do is we give our members targets, like weekly targets of you need to train X amount of days in the week. You need to hit this many steps. You need to hit this many calories, whatever, whatever the targets are, we set them specific things. And I think the best thing to do for anyone listening and for us is to set specific targets. So that will be the easiest way to do that is like you said, get a program in place. So you're, you're asking me to do that and I'm happy to do that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at, I'm monitoring the comments on Facebook right now and they're saying the same. They're like, why don't you two train together? They're saying accountability. They're saying um, they can write us a program. Just, uh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> the comments are funny on there. But um, what, what I mean is like, we need to get a program in place and, and yeah. follow it and then set some targets. So what I did yesterday was I was like, um, I actually stepped on the scale um, for the first time since the start of April. Mm-hmm. I went on to um, step on the scale, saw that I was a little bit up in weight. Um, you didn't even go up by much. <laughs> no, I didn't go up by much. It's, but but I, I know what I'm like, like in terms of like, if, if that carries on, it will just get higher and higher and higher. Like today yeah. it was even higher than it was yesterday. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of those things like it's just uh, catching it before it goes into a problem. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I stood on the scale yesterday and I'm going back on standing on the scale every single day. So I did it yesterday, did it today, first time since April. That's one accountability tool that I've got for myself. Yeah. Not everyone needs to do that. Like daily weight is not for everyone, but for me, it is the best thing like to control my like (laughs) habits because I know that when I'm not monitoring or just putting my head in the sand in terms of like how much I weigh, I don't, I'm not really one to kind of like, um, I I do judge myself, but I'm negative in the way I judge myself anyway on in the mirror. So that's not really a true measure for me. I'm like, I kind of look at myself in a way that are like, I, you know, I want to improve that. I want to improve that as opposed to like being like realistic. So yeah it's not the best way like using the mirror is not the best way clothes is probably okay but yeah yeah you know right now i'm not wearing like tight fit clothing and that sort of thing it's just like baggy comfortable stuff so that's (laughs) not the best thing but the weight is the best accountability tool for me 
So that's what I'm going to go on. The other way that I know, like, I really like controlling my nutrition through tracking my food intake through calories. So that's something else that I'm going to do. Um, not again, like someone listening or someone watching this right now, that might not be the best way to control your nutrition. But for me, tracking my food intake using an app and recording calories is the way that I find the best to control my nutrition. Um, and I always start strong in terms of like, I start strict and then I relax a little bit. But mm. starting with a relaxed attitude for me just makes everything too relaxed. Like I like yeah, to be I agree. strict at the start and then I can, once I'm back on track, I can be a bit more relaxed. Yeah, so and that's, that's, what, that's we, what I'm going to do. And then, what, um, yeah, go on. Go on I was just going to say, that's what we also say with the members as well. Like a few of the members that um, I check in with weekly anyway, I've been saying to them that even if you just track for a couple of weeks strictly, give yourself some accountability, see where you're at, and then obviously ease off from it. Mm. And it really does help. It's something I'm slacking in, like yeah. also jumping on the scales. I haven't jumped on the scales in so long. And actually yeah. I was going to last week and I thought, nah, like, cause I think I'm worried about what it will show. Yeah. Cause I know I've got on some weight and I feel like actually like you've done, maybe I just need to do it. Yeah. If it's up a bit, fine, but at least I know where I'm at. Otherwise I'm going to continue going in that direction and it will only get worse. Yeah. I think, what, what we like to do as humans is anything that seems, I know like standing on the scale, people are like, oh, well, that's not that hard. Or some people might be feeling the same way, like, oh, that's a very scary thing to do. But for different people, it's like has a different level of fear or, and anything like scary or that opens up a true, like realistic thing to you. It's like me and um, progress pictures. I never do them really because they're very honest and they tell yeah, me something yeah. that, I may not want or like to do. So mm. like it, it's almost um, that level of accountability is too much. So it's like, oh, cause it's like something that's a bit scary. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to like face reality. And I'm, I'd rather bury my head in the sand because it's, mm. it's comfortable. The problem with comfortable is it doesn't really bring the best out of you. Uncomfortable yeah. situations often force you to like, make hard decisions and push you to be better mm. but the only problem is it's uncomfortable so it's not yeah, a nice yeah. feeling the, the thing is you have to remember is it's not a nice feeling at the start and once you do get into a good swing of things like that nice that that difficult and that painful feeling of doing something new or scary or uncomfortable disappears and then you get the rewards of doing that uncomfortable behavior so that's something that like when you're thinking about, oh, I should step on the scale, but don't want to, you don't want to face reality. Like mm. you're past that as soon as you go beyond it. Yeah. And I know you know these things I'm telling you. Yeah, as yeah, if, like, yeah. I'm not preaching to you. I'm more me like anyone listening. Exactly. Um, this is advice for them. Like, you know, you will, you will get past that initial fear and uncomfortable yeah. feeling and go to pleasure. Yeah. Um, but you have to and get it's through just temporary, it. Isn't it? It's just yeah, temporary. exactly. Yeah. And finally, the, the one thing I would definitely say to anyone who um, is like struggling with training is get a plan in place. So what I did was I've signed up with, so I already had a program to follow. The only problem is I really enjoyed how they trained me before. And then when we went into the, the home training, I just lost motivation. Yeah. And what I started doing was not following the program fully. I wasn't strictly following it. And I had no real accountability to it. And I just kind of like didn't, it didn't really work. So what I did is I changed. So I stopped my, like, I, I just changed coach. So I got a new coach, um, new program, just as a new refresh. Like you said, you wanted to be running, focus on something totally different. Mm. Um, had a bit more of a fresh start. And I think that's why our members are doing so well as well. Cause the virtual training is new and it's fresh and it's something that's, sparked motivation yeah so that's the same thing for for me like this new program yesterday i did it it was enjoyable it was something new different i haven't done before like obviously i've trained like that before but i mean like yeah. i've never the trained program. with this person yeah. before and i've never trained on this program before so it's fresh and new and it's something like exciting to look forward to mm -hmm. like today's yeah. pro um the program on today is go out for a run and i'm really looking forward to it and I haven't felt like that about training for a very long time. That's the most important part though, isn't it? Looking forward to doing it. Yeah. Like, cause if you don't look forward to doing it, you won't do it. So it's like some of my training sessions, I wasn't looking forward to doing it. I didn't do it. 
So like you were saying with the members, there's new, we even do like, we're offering new types of training sessions now. So I think that has sparked new motivation in members as well. And um, it definitely helps. If you enjoy what you're doing, you're, you're more, more likely to stick to it. Yeah, like with, like, like Sadie just mentioned about, we've added in a lot more sessions. We've done that very purposefully so that people have different things to focus on. So like, it's not just for the sake of like or adding variety to a training program. It's literally, we did it because we wanted our members to be, have something to come in and look forward to. We wanted them to have like something different to do while they're at home. So their training doesn't feel mundane. We were very thoughtful about this, but we weren't very thoughtful in our own training. And I think, no. <laughs> yeah, so th- that's what we, we are now addressing and it, and it yeah. seems to be working. Like it's worked for you. You've, you've ran yeah. twice now. And when would that ever happen? No, in terms no, of that's like not you, like me. <laughs> yeah. And like with me, I've, you know, day one, I know it's only one day, but that's how you turn into two days, yeah. you turn into three days. Day one has gone successfully and I'm pretty sure day two is going to go very successfully too. Um, it's just that kind of thing, like having something to follow and having something to like focus on. Now, I'm just going to go to the comments that I've been saying, just quickly browse through them to see what people are saying on Facebook and stuff. Um, uh, <laughs> Raj said, we're not taking them up on the program. Uh, Kalina <laughs> says, weekly check-ins with us on Facebook as well. So that's actually a really good um, um, thing to do as well. Like have, like what we do in our Facebook group on in our private body Mion group is have a weekly check-in for our members to do two things. We do one thing to let them review their week let us know how they got on, give us feedback, and then they can self-adjust or we can help them adjust if they need that help. The other thing we get them to do at the start of every week is set goals and targets for that week, things that they have to do. And because they put it publicly, it holds them accountable. It makes them, you know, forces them to take action on what they've set for themselves. And they've done it very publicly. Now, me and you are talking about our programming and everything very publicly. (laughs) So coming from this... It, it's going to give us some accountability. Yeah, so definitely. anyone listening to this, don't just kind of keep it to yourself and say, oh, I'm going to train three times a week. And you know you're not because no one's there to push you. Get an external accountability, um, something to drive you forward. It really, really, really will help. I've got a bit of runny nose. I'm going to blow my nose. <laughs> um, You've always got a runny nose, man. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. It's not Corona. It's um, just, <laughs> it's, uh, just me. Um <laughs> So one thing Mariam said as well is, um, she said, I completely get what you are saying, but the issue I have is how do you keep renewing that? It's so easy to go back into being comfortable. I can't seem to change my habits. So the problem is sometimes with these things is you slip up on your why. So a lot of people um, will go from kind of like, they forget about what's driving them and then they rely on that initial wave of motivation that you might have at the start. And one thing you have to have to remember is that you can't depend on um, an initial wave of motivation. So your why has to be that strong from the start. What's driving you has to be that strong from the start that can keep you past that initial wave. Um, The best thing to do is like get into a routine pretty quickly. So start building a routine and those routines will become habits, but then they have to be non-negotiable. So the, the, you can't say, Sadie, like I'm going to run um, 15K three times a week because it's not realistic. You might be able to do it when the motivation's high, but it's difficult. Even 5K mm. five times a week might, like, you know, four times a week still may be difficult. You may only be able to do one 5K run, two shorter runs that are s- s- combined with some, you know, weighted exercises that's more yeah. of a realistic program exactly. and something that you can schedule and be more realistic with long term so Marion, you you have to come up with things that to do every week that are long term and you can do long term so that they don't have to be forced they become something that's non-negotiable becomes a habit like with training Marion, you're brilliant you will not miss a training session and that's become a, a routine for you because when you enjoy it so you force yourself to go regardless of how you feel. You always say F your feelings. It doesn't matter how you feel on this day. This is a non-negotiable thing. Like going to work is a non-negotiable thing. You do it because you know the benefit you're going to get from it. 
With food, it's a little bit different because there's an ins- instant reward of pleasure. Do you see what I mean? Like um, something like a pizza tastes really good straight away. So it doesn't last long, though. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, like, it, it tastes amazing at the moment it hits your tongue. Yeah. So you get pleasure straight away. But um, whereas, like, a long-term approach to nutrition may not have instant rewards; it has later rewards. Yeah. But you need to focus on those later rewards and you also need to make it a bit more of a routine for you. But you also need to make nutrition um, just as good. So people are saying there's a little red battery flashing. Um, I know (laughs) my battery's about to die. I'm trying to, we have to cut off in literally four minutes because Sadie's got to get going anyway and start a training session. So we're going to wrap up now anyway, but um, I'll keep going until the battery cuts out. (laughs) um, (laughs) Typical uh, you. (laughs) We, what I was getting at was that you need to kind of focus and find something that um, helps you build a routine. So it can't be too much of a burden on you to to do, but it also needs to give you results immediately and long term. Yeah. So like with eating well, you need to focus on how it makes you feel. And you also need to focus then that's the immediate results on how it makes you feel instantly in terms of like it, eating well and hitting the goals that you have for yourself makes you feel good. Focus on that. And then you also need to talk about the long-term um, mindset. And like eating like this is going to do what for me in, you know, in 10 days, in 20 days, in 30 days, in 40 days, whatever it is, how am I going to look? How am I going to feel? What's my health going to be like? And focus on that rather than, you know, um, this pizza is going to make me feel good now. And that's not to say yeah. you can't eat pizza. You can fit it into your calories. You just can't eat that food all the time. That's all it is. And yeah. um, the other thing is, the final thing I'll say on this topic, this matter is that, like with food, you have to stop allowing yourself to fail. So people make excuses for themselves. Like Mariam, you're, I know I'm picking, I'm keep talking about Mariam because she's given a very good example. But Mariam, you say with training, you don't even let the thought of, you know, I woke up and I'm tired today and I can't be asked to go to the gym. I'm not going to train. Or I'm going to cancel my session with Vin today because I can't be asked. You never allow that to even enter your head. If it does, you take it out straight away and you go, nope, I'm going to do it regardless. You need to have that same attitude with food. You need to have that same attitude, not just you, but even me. Like when I'm strict, it's because I'm telling myself, you know, you don't necessarily need to eat that biscuit. You want it, but you want your results more, don't you? So mm. don't even entertain the thought of, oh, I should eat it or should I not? You know, you have to literally be that disciplined with yourself. Mm. And everyone has that ability to be disciplined. It doesn't last forever, no. And you will have slip ups. But if you can have majority of the week as discipline, you will get better results. You'll get results. And it is, you have to keep it on a long term mindset. Let's say 365 days in a year, even if for 300 days you were on it. So that's two whole months you flopped. You could still do amazing things in that in that in that year, even exactly. less than that, like eighty yeah. percent of the year. Do you I think that? sometimes <laughs> I know sometimes people try and be perfect too often, and being perfect you can only do for so long. So trying to have an approach that is more achievable, so that you can do that long term, is going to get you better results than trying to be perfect, but just mm. for a small amount of time. So I think yeah. that's what people need to remember as well. I think that's a great point to end on. Um, my camera has just died. <laughs> oh no, it's, just, it's still there. It's still there. I'm still there. It's just timed <laughs> out. Every 30 minutes that will happen. Um, but um, yeah, so I think that's a really good point to end on. Stop trying to be perfect. Go forward um, with progress. It's one, one of our values for our team, for like our ethos, as the way we work, and our members is strive for progress. And that means... Don't be per- like don't aim for perfection because it doesn't exist. It just means trying to be better every day. Do one thing a little bit better. Um, and if you focus on that, like Sadie's with our runs, we get our members to do with nutrition, then things ma- magical things will happen. But That's yeah. a nice way to end it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you find that useful. As always, please let us know your thoughts. Leave us comments, leave us reviews, let us know what you're thinking. And let us know if there's anything you'd like to us to talk about on the next podcast episode or next live we do. Take care, guys. Over and out. Bye. Take care. Bye.